you're traveling through another dimension. A dimension of not only a film and sound, but mind. A journey into an auditory movie review adventure that must be experienced to be believed. There's a signpost up ahead. Your next stop. The Doomsday Clock. Yeah! Which versus the Doomsday Clock? Week 94, who knows how many hours to doomsday. Babs, Babs, are you there? Yes, witch, I am here. Where else would I be? Okay, um, why, why am I in a bubble? Why am I in a bubble on the couch? Why, why? As part of the quantum time collapse, I engineered a life raft of sorts to save you in case the time rifts became too unstable. It would appear that time has finally shattered. I don't like it. Calm down, just be happy you are still alive. Well, I don't like it. Get a grip, monkey boy. No, I, I, I'm not, not enjoying this at all. It feels like I've been moved in time and space and stuck and... I, I, I don't like it. I don't... I, no, no, don't like it. No, 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 no. I don't like it. Make it stop. Make it stop. Make it stop. I didn't want to do this, but it appears I have no choice. Make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. My name's Granny Good. Well, I believe you wanted to enter your daughter, uh, Prudence. What a lovely name. <laughs> in our little school. I finished my homework on nuclear physics. What do I study now? <laughs> Sally, this is Prudence. Hi. Hi. She seems like such a nice girl. But what if there were really something out there? Something terrible? Sounds silly. This girl was a senior at GGSFG. Look at you. You're a mess, honey. My girls had been planning for that dance all week, and I knew it was going to be a real exciting fall. Listen to me, Grakow. you got to find that girl before the cops find her. Well, upstairs, the party was beginning to pick up a bit. I think I've come across something. I'm not sure, but I hope to have an answer for you later this evening. Help! 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 Come on! Oh, Greg! How could you think on me? Okay, you have my attention. This is 1962's House on Bear Mountain. The runtime of one hour and two minutes. Boy, jingos did that fly by. Apparently, according to IMDb, not that it means much, the Wolfman, Dracula and Frankenstein spy on a girls' school in the mountains where most of the girls spend their time sunbathing in the nude, nude exercises and nude art classes. The monsters finally invade the school. I legitimately don't know if that's true. I don't remember. Uh, monsters 
much or invasions. But anyway, directed by Lee Frost, best known for a plethora of 60s and 70s exploitation films, such as 75's Black Gestapo, 71's Chain Gang Women, and 1969's Love Cap 7. This movie stars Bob Creasy as Granny Good, uh, credited as Lovable Bob Creasy. Sure, why not? And there's a whole bunch of uh, exploitation mainstays in here. Um, mostly they did not a lot, um, except for the Wolfman who appeared as Bigfoot in the 1970s TV series The Secrets of Isis. Oh, my God. First impressions count. Now, I think the first thing that comes to mind is... Boobies! Look, look I, I'm not going to lie. I completely lost track of the story. There was a lot going on. Um, yeah, so, uh, did, I, did I mention... Boobies! Uh, anyway, yeah, this is the story, this stuff. There appears to be a... Uh, an illegal still, um, in a girls' school that's run by, um, a transgender person, uh, in an ill-fitting dress. Um, regardless of that, uh, there are a couple of things that I think are important. Uh, the girls in this school love to take a shower. And, um, they have well and truly cornered the market on see-through granny pants and don't believe bras. Boobies! As I mentioned, there is a lot going on in this movie and there are some really big talents in here. Um, you know, I'm sure a number of these young ladies got their start in something from doing this movie. Who knows? Um, one, one of their key talents, I think, is their ability to never actually show their virgins. Obviously, I've been doing sex wrong. Uh, you get to see pretty much everything, but there's a lot of nice little buttocks, some very nice arborees, and a lot of nudity in rooms, and reading, and in the shower, and doing exercises. And really, I think one of the things that is really key about this movie is if you don't know how to transition from one scene to another, just add another shower scene. I wasn't playing with myself in the bathtub. I was just cleaning it and it went off. Tell me what you learned and keep it nice. In terms of learning anything from this movie, eh, there wasn't a lot to really go on, but uh, I think there's a couple of key points that I should should, uh, highlight. Frankenstein was played by Percy Frankenstein. Dracula was played by Doris Dracula. And the Wolfman was played by a Greyhound. People fear what they don't understand. Um, Hair in the 60s is huge, as are a lot of the other things in this movie. Our bodies are capable of adjusting in ways we've hardly dreamt of. But these young ladies seem to spend a lot of time on their hair, and it is fantastic. I can tell you that bouncy star jumps are the best star jumps. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. And the topless drawing classes are not the way I remember them. Apparently, in this school, topless means all the class go topless and the model is fully dressed. Is that right? On that note, topless skip rope, fantastic. Should be an Olympic sport and I am all for it. Um, speaking of things that I'm all for, I think learning is important. I'm learning! And the young lady that is in this movie that basically reads the dictionary completely topless throughout the movie is interesting because no one seems to care that she wanders around uh, completely topless and reading a dictionary. They just take it as normal. And I, for one, think it's a winner. Yeah, a lot of this stuff would make you go blind. Speaking of winners... Apparently, every girl's boyfriend in this movie is going to bring booze to the party. And you know what? I think a boozy topless party sounds fantastic. And it's hard to escape with an erection. And speaking of things that you should do topless, talking on the phone topless, wonderful. Keep the phone right near the stairs so everybody needs to jiggle up and down the stairs before they get to the phone. Coming and going at the same time. There are a couple of things that I think um, also were a bit of a surprise. One of the things is that um, if you're going to a costume party, again, you don't need to wear a top. Unless you've been topless for the entire movie, and then you wear an outfit that has complete covering except for your bare bottom. I'm sure you've got questions. Ask me anything. <laughs> Look, a lot of questions come out of this movie. And um, just on, you know, the first one I think is, can you tell me how to pronounce mausoleum? Not sure why that's important, but it came up. Speaking of things that come up, if the punch is nothing but random booze, is it still punch or is it just booze? This liquid that he's pumped into me. My brain burns with it. It doesn't really matter because everyone seemed to be having a really good time. 
Now, I'm not going to complain about this one, but a lot of these young ladies seem to be a little old to be in school. Having said that, if there's a school for these young women to go about the way they go about, sign me up. Yeah, well, you you got to pay more for that. Now, let me ask you a question. What goes best with a fig leaf costume? Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. For those of you at home that said very tiny leaves to cover your nipples, you are correct. Excellent! And most importantly, the biggest question that comes out of this entire thing is, why doesn't every movie have 10 minutes of soft jazz and bullseye nudity? The idea of uh, dying during or just after the sex act has an ambivalent appeal. Your time is almost up, so give me your final thoughts. Analyzing this movie is, is difficult because I look. I want to go back. I, I want to study it more. I want to go in more in depth and and really try and work out the message that was in this movie. And I think one of them is that topless go go dancing is fantastic. And don't the kids love it? <laughs> the next thing is that you can shoot boobs from any angle, and they still look awesome, huh? Speaking of dancing, the twist was made to be done topless. Oh, yeah. Let him get an eyeful over, because that's all he's going to get. And the very end of this movie is something about unionising werewolves and Granny putting the cops to work in his still. I watched it four times, just to make sure, and I still think the moral of this movie is... Porn is different from sex in real life. Uh, Alright, Babs, so you, I'm, I'm calm now. I'm not focused on being trapped in a bubble. I'm glad your obsession with the female form has managed to defeat your level of panic. Is there anything we can do? The only thing left to do is to send out a broadband quantum distress signal. This would require me to send nanodroids across every spectrum with the hope that someone will hear it and come to help. I can send a message. Okay, here we go. Help me, Hao Ming. Help me, Hao Ming. You're my only hope. <laughs> You have been listening to Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock, a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Come join the rest of the Meat Popsicles in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock.